This time I teach Tom how to adjust the valves on his classic small block motor gutsy. Okay Tom, so we're going to take, use a good weather to check the valve clearances on the V50, V35 engines. They're exactly the same. So the first thing you need to do is take the spark plug out. Okay. Yep, yeah, like that. Yep, yeah, it's quite loose, isn't it? Oh. So you should just you should be able to take the bar out now and just turn it by hand. That's it. Yeah. And then obviously you want to do you want to carefully pull it out and then put it carefully in a box. You don't want to sort of knock the end against anything. We'll check the plug gap when we finish, but you don't want to damage it. Looks okay. Looks alright, right, yeah. No, it's alright. Put it in put there. there, yeah. So that's out. And then go do the same now on the other side. Yeah, we kind of just like go, don't we? Yeah, uh, they've got a, a washer that compresses down. Basically, if you've got a new oh, one... Do you need a new... Put an, uh, for what, change the washer each time? No, you don't. When you... When you put a new one on, you turn it down till it's just tight, and then you go past by half a turn to compress the so washer. It's a little more sooty, but it's okay. Yeah, and when it's um, I think that's sooty umber. That's fine. It's golden brown. It's perfect. You can see that's golden brown. That's absolutely perfect. Actually, that's fine. Yeah. So you've got this compressor ring on it there. When it's a brand new spark plug, you tighten it down, and then you go an extra half a turn to compress it. When it's an old spark plug, you just go about a quarter turn. Right, so next, you've got the one, two, three. Four, four, five, six bolts all the way around that that, uh, that go onto the rocker cover. So you just need to undo them. These are luckily these are quite. You have to be very careful to take these off. The soft aluminium. One big recommendation I've always found is you don't go to the recommended torque settings. You go slightly less. It's better to have it slightly loose and even leak a little bit. Even I'd prefer that to the thing shearing off because it's an absolute pain. Then you've got to take the head off and have it machined and everything. I didn't realise you've already undone them. <laughs> loosened all these. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty loose. They were, luckily they were quite loose anyway. Was it just for one that was a bit tight that you did? Yeah, it was just the one that made me sweat. I always sweat when I've got a tight one. You think, oh, please, no. Because <laughs> of the shear, it's an absolute nightmare. They should all be the same length, bar the, top, the one. top one. Yeah. yeah, they should all be exactly the same. Well, it looks stiff in any one of the tops. Yeah, it should do, yeah. And then to remove the cover then, all we've got to do is up here, you see that Tom, there is there's an oil supply that there's actually helps to put negative pressure into the cam cover, helps to the oil flow. So you've got to undo that. And basically what you've got is a rubber hose with a clamp there. You've just got to undo the clamp with a pair of pliers, yeah, pull it off. Clamp, yeah. Once you've got once you've got these off. And then we've got the valves. So what you got to do, I'll show you on this side, you've got a little clip there, you compress that clip, if you can see that, and it should wiggle down. Now, you, if you can't get this off, what you can do is just move the head to one side, it's not like the end of the world or anything, but there you go, it's gone, you see it's moved down now, and we just need to, maybe a little screwdriver and gently just move the hose down, yeah, that might do it. Do you, just, do you see where the hose is? Just, just gently sort of wiggle the end of it down. Get at it. Oh, it's a bit. Yeah, it might be easier from the side actually. Well, I think it might be easier actually. Just take the head off. So if we go. Rubber mallet's good at this point, which I might have to go and get. Let's just try this. Oh, well, there you go. It. Just there you go. Now, it should have a gasket, and if you're lucky, the other person didn't put seal on it. Because we put sealant on it mega pain because it'll tend to stick to it and it'll rip and you end up buying a new gasket every time. The best, the easiest thing to use is just a bit of grease actually as a sealant. It doesn't work quite as well I don't think, although it seems pretty good but it does mean that you don't sacrifice your gasket every time. So now we can see, we can see the pipe now we should be able just to just wiggle it off for a bit of luck and if not then we'll just, if we didn't come off, let's be, let's be, oh, it's, there it goes. Then that's off, we can put that to one side now. Just need to repeat on the other side now. And there's the valve gear. There's your tappets, and there's your valves. Exhaust obviously from that. Coolio. Let's cool. do the other side.
Tom now repeats the procedure and removes the rocker cover from the other side. The big question now is, how do you get, how do you know when you've got to check your valves? And obviously what you've ha got to have is basically the cylinder head at top dead centre on the compression stroke. So how do you establish that? You do that, the easy, I mean, there are several ways you can do it. There's actually a timing, some, some of the bikes, some of the guzzies have got a timing mark on the flywheel, you can do a cover and see it. Not all of them have though, so you've got to do it the old fashioned way. Now the old fashioned way is quite simply, you put it in gear, so about second gear, and you turn the back wheel. And then you watch the valves. So you, and you're just going through the, through the suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So you get that opens, uh, and then closes. And then as this is closing, you know it's compressing. So then what you do is you put something down the cylinder head very gently, and you feel, you just, you just go, you just sort of nudge the wheel forward a little bit like that. Just sort of nudge it. And as you nudge it forward, you can feel it rising in your fingers. You rest your finger on it. You feel when it just stops rising. And, that's, and then you know you're top dead centre or you're within a few degrees of it. And at that point, you can check your cylinder head. Okay. So what we're going to do now is just use your hand, click it up to about second gear, something like that. Let's see, you have to roll it to get it in. Go on. Right, okay. Right, okay. Okay, so what you're gonna do is watch the cylinder head. So I'll turn the wheel. No, you haven't got your clutch on, have you? Yeah. No. No clutch, you've got to turn the engine over. Okay. No clutch. Right. So if you look, go up another gear because it's a bit too hard at the minute. Up another gear. Another gear, yeah. Okay, that'll do. You're in neutral. Up another gear. And up, in, up into a gear, yeah. <laughs> into one of your neutrals. Okay, so exhaust valve is closed. So that was the inlet. We're on the inlet stroke. So that was the piston that was on the way down. This has suddenly come back up. So th this has suddenly risen up. So we now know that the piston is on its way back up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put it in very gently and just feel for the piston. The piston is at the top, actually. Just feel for it. If you put, rest your finger on it just like that, right? Coming up. Coming up. See? Just a tiny amount. See it's still coming up? And now it's stopped rising. Right, so that should be top. And look, there's a clearance on both valves. So they're both open. So we now know we're at top dead centre on the compression stroke. So this is the point at which just about now you get the spark. So obviously when you've got bang going on, these need to be closed. And you can see they are closed and there is a gap. So what we need to do now is measure that gap, don't we? So before we measure the gap, we're going to look at the book, we're going to look to see what that gap's got to be. So for the V55 Imola, that's us. Don't be too close, you can't see it. Right. So V55 Imola, inlet is 0.15 millimetres, and the exhaust is 0.2 millimetres. So we just need a feeler gauges. Nice metric feeler gauges. So you can see the modules on them. So it's 0.05, that's not for measuring valve clearances, obviously. So we're looking at 0.2 and 0.15, aren't we? Now, let's have a look see what we've got. We've got a 10, we've got a 2, so there's 2. And there is a 0.15, don't know, there isn't always. Sometimes you have to mix that. The the one and the, and the 0.5 together, but there is a 0.15, so there we go. So there we go, we have both the ones we need. Now this should just fit in. So which one do we say? So we says the exhaust, because there's just a smaller valve, but opens slightly wide, but has a slightly bigger gap because it gets hotter. So there's more expansion going on. So we just pull that in, it should go in a little bit tight. And then put one five in there, and that's about perfect. Because look, it just goes in. You see, it goes in, but it grips it, but it doesn't grip it tight. It's just, just smooth. Yeah. So that's about right. So it holds itself, but then if you pull on it, it comes out easily. If you've got to push, if it's kind of buckling up to get in, to put it in, or if you did that and it just dropped on the floor, it's too loose. Then, or if you're buckling when you're trying to push it in, then it's too tight. You've got to open it up. But this one, the exhaust, 
we think is it let's see now see how far that works so it just about goes in but these are 0.15 which is smaller that goes in so it's actually sitting slightly wider than that one but it needs to go to 0.2 so we've got to open it out a tiny amount so when I was doing the Royal Anfield but you can buy a specialist Royal Anfield valve um, valve adjuster for a ton of money you can buy these for next to nothing off eBay and it's a universal kit and it's got different ends that will fit on different types of valve heads so obviously this one if you look up here it's just got a, a just a just a slot isn't it it's just a standard sort of flat head you see that just fits in there and then you know you just need the head size for here which i think is like an eight or a ten mil and you just and it just fits on there like that and you've got different sizes of these to fit on different sizes of of nut for the head so we're not going to do anything with that one but this one we are so all you do is this goes on to the onto the lock nut and then this slides onto there. Can you see, see that engage? Just mm -hmm. engage, just wiggling that just on loose. So what we've got to do is try and hold this still, but then undo the lock nut. Let's see. It isn't too tight, that's pretty tight. That's it. Now what we want to do now, like straight away we've got the gap we needed. Look at that. Because what we need to do now is hold the, the flat head screw still with this while we tighten this up. Invariably, it never works first time. When you try to tighten this up, it tightens the whole thing up, and there you go, it's gripped, it's gripped it. So it's always a little bit tricky, so we'll just undo it again a bit more. Open it out slightly. So just turn that very slightly, the lot on that one. And I'm try and resist this, tighten it up. Yeah, right, so that's tight. You can see now. Done. It'll, it slides in easy enough. Doesn't drop out. So it's not sloppy. But we're not getting too much resistance. So you see that's perfect, isn't it? Yep. See how it works? You can't hardly see the gap. the gap is tiny. All the gap is for is to like expansion of the push rods. Because obviously the push rods will stretch as they get hot, and that will tend to then because it's at another end of a seesaw, if you like, to push and as it expands, it'll push on this rocker. And I'll push down on the valves and, and leave the valve open. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So one side done, I let Tom loose on the other side. And he has no problems at all, bar and over tightened a lot not. Well, other than that, it was plain selling all the way through. Easy peasy. Boom! So how was that as the first service work you've done on your own bike? It was pretty easy. It's pretty easy, wasn't it? I mean, you can it's see... Like Guzzies are kind of like... The, the fantastic thing about Guzzies is unlike even a BSA or something, to check the valve, to do the valve timing. Yeah, I mean, not to, the valve, to check the valves, you have to take the tank off. This, you don't really... I mean, it's even easier if you take the, the tank off, but there's no need to. Oh, you can, you know, you can only touch anything by that little cover and then there's the valves. It's a matter yeah. of minutes. You know, and I was sort of teaching, talking you through it. If I was on my own, it'd been twice as quick, you know. I mean, I feel like I could 20, have it 20 out. minutes, half an hour, and you're done, and, and it's it finished. Like it looks like the manual could have worked it out yeah. by itself. Yeah, yeah. It's just finding top dead centre, which is actually not that difficult, is it? It's quite yeah, easy. Yeah, I think finding top dead centre is like where the start is for. Yeah. Right, so, uh, job done. Well, I do hope you found that useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thank you very much for watching.